Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys some initial impressions of the Motorola LapDoc 500. Now this LapDoc is priced at $299.99. It's the latest addition to the LapDoc family. It is universally compatible with a whole host of Motorola WebTop enabled smartphones, so that's definitely a really good thing. Construction is predominantly plastic. In fact, I think it's all plastic, but that does lend to the light weight for its form factor. It weighs in at around 3.2 pounds. Uh, it has a whole host of features that have been basically you know, crammed in here in order to accommodate what Motorola considers to be a business uh, user market. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a tour of the hardware and really just, you know, again, initial impressions. Unlike the Atrix or Bionic laptop, as I mentioned, universal compatibility. It also has a 14-inch display, a full-size keyboard, uh, front-facing webcam, which I'll show you in a moment for video conferencing, VGA out for video out, of course. Haven't tested that yet, so I can't tell you guys what it's capable of. Ethernet port, two USB ports, headphone jack, which may seem insignificant, but is pretty key since no other laptop does have headphone out, which is really important if you want to be able to listen to what you're watching or, you know, viewing on your laptop or take a call without having to use Bluetooth. So pretty important. Of course, you could always hook up a headphone, uh, you know, to your three and a half millimeter headphone jack of your actual smartphone while it's docked on the previous gen. But again, just a little more attention to detail here, which I do think is critical. Again, you do always have those two USB ports, which can be found on every lap dock that has been produced. So let me give you guys a tour of the hardware. Again, as I mentioned before, you're looking at a full keyboard. No, uh, you know, downsized footprint here, as this is basically an, you know, an attempt to replace your actual laptop, even though it is more of a netbook uh, experience, a Linux netbook at that, in terms of performance, because you are, you know, driving this keyboard internal battery, which should give you somewhere between seven and nine hours. Haven't tested it yet to comment. Of course, that will vary based on how much of a charge your uh, smartphone has, because your smartphone will continuously charge from this device, like all other laptops that I've shown you guys. In addition to that, um, you do have customized Android buttons like the, the uh, LapDoc 100 that I previously reviewed. So that's definitely a good thing. Shows some of the extra polish that the first generation of LapDocs was missing. And of course, we see much of what the 100 had to offer come to the 500. This is uh, the highest end LapDoc uh, or more complete LapDoc experience that Motorola has to offer now. So that comes through on the keyboard in my opinion. A much larger touchpad a lot of room for you know your wrists. It's not angled uh, in the way that the LapDoc 100 is to be you know ergonomic but on the whole I think this is at least in my one day that I've spent with it really comfortable experience and really does make me feel like I'm sitting in front of my laptop. Granted the performance is not the same. The capability in terms of just connectivity is close. It's it, you know it's a really interesting uh, device. I will put it at that. Need to spend more time with it. Moving away from the keyboard experience, do want to show you guys that 14 inch 720p display. I do not have my phone hooked up to it right now but as you can see as I uh, slam the tripod you know it's a it's a large uh, matte finish display, not high gloss. There's your, uh, you know, webcam right there, which does essentially utilize the software for uh, your camera on board on your phone, and that should essentially then just allow you to, you know, basically video conference, and that's the idea there. Uh, a soft uh, finish here on the top, again, all plastic, a little bit fingerprint prone, but not bad at all in my opinion. Uh, let me go ahead and show you guys the front. You've got your two stereo speakers here, as well as the lip in the center, essentially to open the uh, lap dock. Nothing along the left side, completely clean there. You've got this hump that you'll find at the back, you know, the junk in the trunk that's on all the lap docks currently, and that's essentially to give you the connectivity. So here is the lap dock connector, which is essentially just a rubber plug that, as you can see, just comes off of here. This gives access to the docking bay for your respective uh, Motorola smartphone. So you can just sit, in, uh, sit it in here, plug it in, and boom, you're good to go. That's the idea. I do like it. Uh, certainly like this design more than what you find on the 100, which is essentially just a rubber slot, one size fits all, because not everything does fit there. And this is just a cleaner, nicer look, in my opinion. Your VGA out, of course, your power port, ethernet, USB, your lock, 
And then if I flip it around, of course, another USB port on the right side of the device, your headphone jack, as I mentioned before, which again, seems insignificant, but as far as lap docks go, this is a step in completing the package, believe it or not. And then a power button as well as your power LED above it to indicate, you know, charging status. And then finally, one of the most important features that this lap dock brings to the table is the full-size SD card slot. Now, I'm not sure, you know, what capacity that supports up to, but it'll be interesting to test it out because this, again, really does transform, in my opinion, uh, the mobile phone experience and really redefines what you can do with your smartphone. Granted, the first-gen lap docks, at least in, you know, concept and uh, theory, were a step in the right direction. This seems like a much larger step in the direction of execution and getting it right. So I really look forward to giving you guys further impressions of this device. Again, seven to nine hours of battery life. Really look forward to seeing if that's true because the 100 certainly didn't live up to the battery life that the uh, original lineup of lap docks for the Atrix and Bionic had. So this looks to be the complete package and uh, I look forward to giving you guys further impressions as I get to spend more time with it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.